Hello guys and welcome to another tier list of mine. Today I'm going to talk about a different kinds of tier list because this will be a difficulty tier list. Let's find out which clans are very nice for beginners and which clans are for the experts. Let's start. So first clan we are talking about is the goat. The goat is the most stable clan in Northgard because of the sheepfolds. The sheepfolds generate food passively. That is amazing. It's literally impossible to starve with the goat. They also generate coins passively if you go into wool trade. This clan is super nice for the beginners. Very easy to play. After the goat we have the boar. The boar is very easy to play because of certain lores, namely simple living and lay of the land. Simple living means that you can actually build buildings with minus 50% food and Lay of land means that it reduces the hostility of the environment, meaning the environment will not attack you as much. Also, it's super nice to just colonize tiles with wolves on them, so you're really independent from all the other clans, and this clan is just awesome for beginners. After the boar, we have, of course, the stag. Stag, still one of the easiest clans, in my opinion, not as easy as goat as boar, still super easy. You literally just have to upgrade things and the clan rewards you by sending you resources. And the clan is still very decent in the game and Jar works for stag as well. Not much to add here. After that, we go into the easy category, starting with the bear. There are some mechanics which makes the bear easy, namely that winters are super easy for your clan, they aren't as harsh as for the other clans, and you have the ability to recruit your Kaya bear May June, which is just a super nice defensive tool, especially against neutral attacks like wolves, like elves, and the bear will just make sure that your villagers stay healthy. Also, just having to build fishermen and harpoons is super easy and it's literally impossible to starve with this clan as well. The only thing that's really hard with this clan is getting ready like early. So I would say this clan is a little bit harder to master when you want to go into like high ranked team games. But apart from that, this clan is easy as well. After the bear, we have my love, my only, the horse clan. The horse clan is easy because you just basically do everything the same game. You don't have to adapt anywhere because you just recruit your chiefs, you mine your iron, you forge your tools, you mine the stone, you upgrade your buildings and then you're happy. This is actually what the horse is about. The horse is a little bit on the weaker side right now. I hope it'll get stronger with the next patches but it's still very easy to play if you don't want to play any of the four other clans. So these five clans are actually the clans I would recommend for beginners, namely the goat. The goat is like the easiest clan out of the five, but all of these clans are very easy. After that, we go into the okay category, which is kind of hard, but it's fine. Starting with the Kraken. The Kraken has a lot of unique skills and it's kind of hard to get into, but once you learn it, it's super easy. The only thing you have to keep in mind with the Kraken is that you sometimes have to adapt to the map. But apart from that, the word mechanic is easy in my opinion. If you stay positive, you recruit people. If you stay negative, you recruit spectrals. The Kraken also is a very nice clan to one trick as knowing the limits of this clan will reward you in team games a lot and actually diffing the other Kraken player by 4-6 to six Warband can win you the game easily. You have to be mindful of the timing sometimes, but mostly this clan is about the A202 convert and that's very doable, especially for intermediate players in Northgard. Don't get me wrong, regarding the adaptability, there are some spawns which are really rough to play. For example, if your lore is blocked by two wolves or if there's only kobolds as neutrals on the map, so you have to communicate with your clear clan to kind of defend the neutrals, if that makes sense. But apart from that, this clan is one of the clans which has a very nice feel to it. It is a little bit more difficult, but it's not as hard as the other clans. Following the Kraken, we've got the Tree Rat, namely the Squirrel. The Squirrel has a lot of uh, unique mechanics as well. It can cook, it can meal. Winters are harsher. It gathers resources in October and November, but having to, to know the limits of the clan is what makes this clan hard. After knowing the limits of the clan, knowing what you can do and what this clan can do, especially in 8 one if you will go for a rush, can be super deadly. And even though it is not as easy as the bear and horse, I think it's kinda okay to learn. In the same category as the squirrel goes the wolf, 
the wolf is the first clear clan on this list. Uh, the only thing that's really hard with the wolf is having to know the limitations of the clan as well, mainly that you get resources by killing stuff. So it all comes down to if you can kill stuff so you don't starve. <laughs> that's basically all the wolf clan is. One thing that makes the wolf clan a little bit hard for the beginners is getting the berserker out early. So you have to learn that timing by heart, like getting the iron, getting all the coins you need for the berserker. But in my opinion, once you got the berserker out, this clan is super nice to play and it is not nearly as hard as the other two clear clans on this list. So after finishing the okay, we're already going into the hard category, starting with the Lynx. The Lynx, in my opinion, is the hardest clan on the hard category. Not because you have to hire the Lynxes, that's easy, but you have to micro your trackers. Your clan mainly has a warband consisting of ranged units. That means these ranged units are very squishy and the people will try to run them down. So you have to be on point with your micro. Also, you have to adapt, like if you want to play for a rush lynx, if you want to play for an eco lynx, you have to know what your cats can actually tank and what your limits are. If you overstep your limits and you get wiped, it's super hard to come back from. So it's very unforgiving as a clan. There are some unique mechanics, for example, the mythical uh, lure, which spawns creatures. Your Miliki can spawn creatures. And also the Lynx clan has a unique military path as well. So that clan is hard to pick up and really hard to master, even though it's not the hardest on this list. Right behind the Lynx clan, we have the snake. The snake has a lot of unique abilities as well, mainly starting with Signy, so you have to utilize the Signy as best as you can. That's all that comes down to. Which tiles do you want to burn? When do you want to harass? Can you micro your Signy to clear tiles? Can you help your clear clan? The snake clan is hard to pick up, very hard to master, but it's not the hardest. But it's also one of the clans which will reward you if you one trick it. But just be mindful that most of the players do not enjoy playing against the snake, so it can be hard to one trick because finding games with snake will be kind of hard. But if you know when to go field rations, when to go city builder with the snake, when you can go aggro with the rush and what you can do with the clan, this clan is really strong. After the snake, we got the dragon. Same as with the lynx and the snake, the dragon has some very unique clan abilities, mainly having thralls and having a dragon essence gauge. Also, you recruit dragonkin instead of warriors. You have the unique draconic frenzy in your lore tile. Everything about this clan feels super different compared to the rest. So this clan is hard. I wouldn't recommend this clan for the beginners at all. But if you know how to have the build order, I, li I really like the carpentry build with the dragon. It's kind of okay to play. Also, what's really nice about the dragon is that you don't have to be mindful of your wounded units. Your, wo your wounded units don't count as your wounded units. What makes this clan so hard to play is having to adapt to opponents' rushes and having to adapt to the map. And sometimes you don't even get to execute your build order with the dragon but also having to sacrifice the units and having the timing for that can be quite hard if you don't know the game so after the dragon we have the ox clan kind of the same as with the dragon clan the ox clan is very unique because you can only assign one villager to each building and the ox clan needs a lot of babysitting so compared to the dragon the dragon can just clear himself and just move out of tiles the ox cannot do that the ox needs a clear clan to help him and even though if you have a clear clan and if you go city builder this clan is really unforgiving as well if you make a mistake if you lose your chief you don't have to invest 15 iron to re no, not only recruit it but you have to invest 15 more iron to get the chief back. Also, if you want to go for Relic, that's another 10 iron. So this clan needs a lot of food tiles. It needs a lot of stone tiles. It needs a lot of iron tiles. This clan, as I said, really unforgiving if you lose your chief. So in my opinion, hard clan. And right behind the ox, we got the red, the last of the very unique clans, which are not expert level, but hard to play. The red has some unique abilities. For example, having the overwork ability, having shamans, who can heal you and not having the ability to build houses. Though this clan is super unique compared to all the other clans, but it's also, in my opinion, a really fun clan to play. And it's a very nice clan to one trick. If you get to play Red on an expert level, Red is super strong. I would really recommend for the like immediate and advanced players to try out one tricking the Red. Super fun clan to play. So after going for the hard category, let's go for the expert and the hardest clans on Northgard, starting with 
Lion. Man, Lion is so hard. First of all, it's a Southern Kingdom clan, so all the buildings are different. <laughs> if you compare it to all the other Northfield clans, this clan is super different. And also, you have to adapt to spawns. If you have open, open stone, or if you have open food, you have to play differently. And also, this clan usually gets ready in 802. It has the best military power in 802 because of the deflecting champions. This skill is super strong once it gets rolling, but having this gets rolling part is very hard with this clan. It's really hard to defend rushes, it's really hard to get tiles to aid livability fast, and compared to the stoat, you do not have as much population, so you have to be mindful where to assign your population. With the stoat, it's way easier, it's still a southern kingdom clan, so the clan is hard, but you can actually turn tiles into duchies, and this helps you get to 8 livability, its economy is way more stable than the lions, and the stoat despite having like these southern kingdom perks is easier than the lion. After the stoat we got the eagle, the hardest clear clan in the entire game. With the eagle you have to do so much at the same time. You have to micro your scouts, you have to micro your home, you have to micro your army. If you mess up any of these you will most likely starve or you will lose your army. Eagle is super strong, like if you one trick the eagle you can carry games single-handedly. It's very independent. You can not only clear, but you can scout for yourself, which is super useful if you're playing with randoms in 3v3 team games. But despite that, super hard to play. You have to know when you can starve, when you can afford to starve. You have to know how to actually kite with X throwers, like the X thrower juggle. You have to know which treasure you have to go to, because you have everything on the map you can do. You can take wolf dance, you can take draugr tombs, you can take any kinds of treasure. It relies heavily on decision making, even more so than the wolf, but it revolves you because you actually have a better chance to recover. And because you can pick up stone and iron from caches, you don't even have to mine and upgrade and forge. So this clan is super strong, very hard, but it revolves you heavily if you figure it out. And in the same category, just not that you have to clear is the raven. You have to do a lot with raven, you have to scout, you have to manage your economy, you have to take a look at the map, how you play things. It's sometimes hard to adapt with the raven. Usually you go for double scout camp in the beginning to unlock the rangers as fast as you can, but then there are a lot of questions like when do you go for food buildings, when do you mine stone, when do you mine iron. There's a lot of very difficult decision making on the raven's part, but it's also what makes the skill ceiling of both the eagle and the raven so high and there is a reason why these birds are sometimes banned in the north guard lobbies because these really pack a punch and in comparison to the lion and stoat they are not as difficult as them in my opinion so i'm really curious about what you guys think of this list are there some clans which you disagree with or would you place another clan somewhere else and i hope this list will be helpful for you guys and as always thank you so much for watching and take care